In this video, we will explore the top 25 interview questions commonly asked for infrastructure engineering positions. These questions will help you understand key concepts and prepare effectively for your upcoming interviews. We will also provide detailed answers to each question, offering insights into best practices and industry standards. This resource aims to enhance your confidence and readiness for your next career opportunity. 1. Can you describe your experience with cloud computing platforms, like AWS, Azure, or Google Cloud Platform? My experience with cloud computing platforms includes extensive work with AWS and Azure. I have utilized AWS services like EC2, S3, and RDS for deploying scalable applications, while Azure has been my go-to for integrating with Microsoft services. I have implemented CI-CD pipelines using AWS code pipeline and Azure DevOps. Understanding cloud security best practices is crucial, so I've managed IAM roles and security groups to ensure data protection. My familiarity with cloud cost management tools helps optimize resource usage and control expenses effectively. 2. What tools and technologies do you use for infrastructure automation and orchestration? In my experience, I leverage tools like Terraform for Infrastructure as Code, IAC, which enables consistent and repeatable infrastructure deployment across environments. For configuration management, I use Ansible and Puppet, allowing for automated setup and maintenance of servers. In terms of orchestration, Kubernetes is my go-to for managing containerized applications, ensuring efficient scaling and deployment. Additionally, I utilize CI-CD tools such as Jenkins and GitLab CI for automating the deployment pipeline, which streamlines workflows and enhances collaboration between development and operations teams. 3. How do you approach capacity planning and resource allocation in a large-scale infrastructure environment? Capacity planning involves analyzing current and future resource needs based on projected usage patterns. I start by collecting historical data to understand trends in resource consumption. This data helps in forecasting future demands. I also collaborate with stakeholders to align infrastructure needs with business objectives. Implementing automated monitoring tools allows for real-time tracking of resource utilization, which informs timely adjustments. Employing redundancy and scalability strategies, such as load balancing and auto-scaling, ensures resources are allocated efficiently during peak loads while minimizing wastage during low usage periods. 4. Explain your experience with containerization technologies like Docker and container orchestration platforms like Kubernetes. I have extensive experience with containerization technologies, primarily using Docker for packaging applications into lightweight, portable containers. This allows for consistent environments across development, testing, and production. I have utilized Kubernetes for orchestration, managing container deployment, scaling, and networking. In one project, I migrated a monolithic application to microservices architecture using these technologies, improving deployment speed and system reliability. My experience also includes implementing CI-CD pipelines to automate the deployment process, enhancing efficiency and reducing downtime significantly. 5. How do you ensure high availability and fault tolerance in infrastructure design? Ensuring high availability and fault tolerance involves implementing redundant components such as load balancers, replicated databases, and failover systems. I design systems with multiple availability zones or regions to minimize the risk of downtime. Regularly testing failover mechanisms and conducting disaster recovery drills is crucial. Monitoring tools help identify issues proactively, allowing for quick remediation. Leveraging auto-scaling groups ensures that resources can adapt to traffic spikes, maintaining performance while minimizing costs. Documentation of processes and architecture supports team understanding and response during incidents. 6. What strategies do you employ for disaster recovery and business continuity? Disaster recovery and business continuity strategies focus on minimizing downtime and data loss. Key approaches include regular backups of critical data, which should be stored off-site or in the cloud. Implementing a detailed disaster recovery plan that outlines specific roles and procedures is essential. Regular testing of this plan ensures its effectiveness during an actual incident. Utilizing redundancy in infrastructure, such as load balancing and failover systems, helps maintain availability. Finally, conducting risk assessments periodically can identify potential vulnerabilities and improve preparedness. 7. Describe your experience with infrastructure monitoring and logging tools. How do you use them to maintain system health? In my previous roles, I have utilized various monitoring and logging tools such as Prometheus, Grafana, ELK Stack, and CloudWatch. These tools enable real-time tracking of system performance, resource utilization, and application logs. By setting up alerts for critical metrics, I can quickly identify and address issues before they impact users. Regularly reviewing logs helps in understanding usage patterns and optimizing resource allocation. Utilizing dashboards allows for visualizing performance trends, leading to informed decision-making for maintaining system health and reliability. 8. How do you approach security in infrastructure design and implementation? When approaching security in infrastructure design and implementation, I prioritize a layered security model, which includes network segmentation, data encryption, and robust access controls. I conduct regular security assessments and vulnerability scans to identify potential threats. 
Implementing Identity and Access Management IAM, policies ensures that users have the least privilege necessary for their roles. Additionally, security monitoring tools and incident response plans are essential to detect anomalies and respond swiftly. Continuous training and awareness programs for the team are vital to maintaining a security-first mindset across the organization. 9. Can you walk me through a complex infrastructure issue you've encountered and how you resolved it? In a previous role, I faced a significant issue when a critical application experienced downtime due to a misconfigured load balancer. The load balancer was not distributing traffic evenly, leading to overload on a single instance. To resolve this, I first analyzed the logs to identify the misconfiguration. After pinpointing the issue, I reconfigured the load balancer settings for optimal traffic distribution. Additionally, I implemented monitoring alerts to catch similar issues in the future. Post-resolution, I conducted a review session with the team to share insights gained from the experience. 10. How do you troubleshoot network connectivity issues in a distributed system? Troubleshooting network connectivity issues in a distributed system begins with isolating the problem. I check the status of network interfaces and ensure they are operational. Using tools like Ping or Traceroute, I can determine where the breakdown occurs, whether it's at the client, server, or within the network infrastructure. Examining firewall rules and network configurations is crucial, as misconfigurations can block connectivity. I also utilize logs from network devices to identify anomalies. If necessary, I employ packet capture tools to analyze traffic flows and pinpoint issues, ensuring a methodical approach to resolving the connectivity problem. 11. Describe a time when you had to optimize system performance. What steps did you take? In a previous role, I identified a bottleneck in our application performance due to inefficient database queries. To address this, I first analyzed the slow queries using performance monitoring tools and identified the most critical ones. I then optimized these queries through proper indexing and restructuring them for efficiency. Additionally, I implemented caching mechanisms to reduce the load on the database. Following these changes, the application response time improved significantly. I also set up regular performance reviews to proactively identify and resolve potential issues. 12. How would you approach migrating a large-scale application from on-premises to the cloud? To migrate a large-scale application from on-premises to the cloud, I would begin with a thorough assessment of the application's architecture and dependencies. Next, I would select the appropriate cloud services that align with the application's requirements, ensuring scalability and performance. A phased migration strategy would be essential, allowing for testing and validation at each stage. I would also prioritize data migration, employing secure transfer methods. Collaboration with development and operations teams is crucial to ensure minimal downtime and a smooth transition. Continuous monitoring would help address any post-migration issues efficiently. 13. What is your understanding of infrastructure as code, IAC? How have you implemented it in past projects? Infrastructure as Code, IAC, is a methodology that enables infrastructure management through code instead of manual processes. IAC allows teams to define infrastructure using configuration files, making it easier to reproduce environments, version control, and automate deployments. In past projects, I have utilized tools such as Terraform and AWS CloudFormation. By writing declarative scripts, I could provision resources efficiently, maintain consistency across environments, and implement changes safely through version control systems. This approach reduced errors and enhanced collaboration within the team. 14. How do you ensure configuration management across a large number of servers? Configuration management across numerous servers can be achieved through automation tools such as Ansible, Puppet, or Chef. These tools allow for consistent application of configurations by using predefined scripts or manifests. Additionally, version control systems like Git can be employed to track changes, ensuring any updates are systematically applied and easily reversible. Regular audits and compliance checks help maintain adherence to configuration standards, while infrastructure as code, IAC, practices facilitate replicable and scalable environments, reducing manual errors and enhancing operational efficiency. 15. What CICD practices do you follow for infrastructure deployment? In my experience, I implement CICD practices by integrating infrastructure as code, IAC, into the deployment pipeline. This includes using tools like Terraform or AWS CloudFormation for provisioning resources. Automated testing is crucial. I use tools such as Jenkins or GitLab CI to validate configurations before deployment. I also promote blue-green deployments or canary releases to minimize downtime and mitigate risks during updates. Continuous monitoring of the deployed infrastructure ensures that any issues can be quickly identified and addressed, maintaining system reliability and performance. 16. How do you approach version control for infrastructure code? Version control for infrastructure code is essential to maintain consistency and track changes. I typically use Git as the version control system, creating separate repositories for different projects or components. Each change is documented through descriptive commit messages, allowing for easy rollback if issues arise. I implement branching strategies, such as Git flow, to manage features, fixes, and releases. Code reviews and pull requests ensure that changes are scrutinized before merging, enhancing code quality. 
Automated testing is integrated into the workflow to catch errors early, promoting a stable environment. 17. How do you collaborate with development teams to ensure smooth deployment and operation of applications? Collaboration with development teams involves regular communication and alignment on project goals. I prioritize establishing a shared understanding of deployment pipelines and infrastructure requirements. Weekly sync meetings help address concerns, while tools like Slack or Microsoft Teams facilitate real-time discussions. Utilizing CICD practices allows developers to integrate their code seamlessly, while infrastructure as code ensures consistent environments. By providing documentation on infrastructure changes and best practices, we can reduce friction and enhance teamwork during deployments, ensuring applications operate smoothly and efficiently. 18. Can you describe a situation where you had to explain a complex technical concept to non-technical stakeholders? In a previous role, I had to explain cloud migration benefits to the marketing team. I used analogies, comparing cloud storage to renting a storage unit instead of owning a house. This helped them understand cost efficiency and flexibility. I created visual aids that illustrated how cloud services could enhance their campaigns, making technical jargon accessible. By focusing on how these changes would directly impact their work, I ensured they grasped the importance without getting lost in technical details. This approach fostered collaboration and aligned our goals effectively. 19. How do you stay updated with the latest trends and technologies in infrastructure engineering? Staying updated with the latest trends and technologies in infrastructure engineering involves several strategies. I regularly read industry blogs, technical documentation, and white papers from leading cloud providers and technology companies. Attending webinars and conferences is crucial for networking and gaining insights from experts in the field. Additionally, participating in online forums and communities allows for knowledge sharing and collaboration. I also dedicate time to hands-on experimentation with new tools and technologies in lab environments, ensuring practical understanding of their applications. 20. Describe a time when you had to lead a major infrastructure project. What challenges did you face and how did you overcome them? During a major infrastructure migration project, I led a team tasked with transitioning our on-premises systems to a cloud environment. One significant challenge was ensuring minimal downtime while migrating critical applications. To address this, we implemented a phased approach, prioritizing less critical services first and conducting thorough testing. Communication was key. I organized daily stand-ups to address issues promptly and keep stakeholders informed. By closely monitoring performance metrics post-migration, we quickly identified and resolved any emerging issues, ensuring a smooth transition. 21. If our company decided to move all our infrastructure to the cloud, how would you approach this transition? To approach this transition, I would begin with a comprehensive assessment of our current infrastructure, identifying dependencies and critical workloads. Next, I would develop a detailed migration strategy that prioritizes applications based on their importance and complexity. Engaging stakeholders throughout the process is crucial for aligning expectations and minimizing disruptions. I would also create a robust testing plan to validate configurations in the cloud environment. Training for the team on cloud services and best practices would be essential, ensuring a smooth transition and ongoing operations. 22. How would you design a scalable and resilient infrastructure for a high-traffic e-commerce website? To design a scalable and resilient infrastructure for a high-traffic e-commerce website, I would implement a microservices architecture, enabling independent scaling of each service. Load balancers would distribute incoming traffic across multiple instances to prevent bottlenecks. Auto-scaling groups would ensure resources dynamically adjust based on traffic spikes. Utilizing a content delivery network, CDN, would enhance global performance. Data redundancy and multi-region deployments would ensure resilience against failures, while regular backups and robust monitoring would maintain data integrity and system health. 23. What steps would you take to improve the security posture of our existing infrastructure? To enhance the security posture of existing infrastructure, I would start by conducting a comprehensive security assessment to identify vulnerabilities and risks. Implementing robust access controls and ensuring the principle of least privilege is crucial. Regularly updating and patching systems will mitigate known vulnerabilities. I would also deploy intrusion detection systems and establish continuous monitoring for unusual activities. Additionally, fostering a culture of security awareness among employees through training will help in recognizing potential threats. Finally, developing and testing incident response plans will ensure readiness for any security breaches. 24. If you noticed a sudden spike in resource utilization across our infrastructure, how would you investigate and address it? To investigate a sudden spike in resource utilization, I would first check monitoring dashboards for alerts and metrics indicating abnormal usage patterns. Identifying which services or instances are affected is crucial. Next, I would analyze logs to pinpoint any recent changes, deployments, or unusual user activity. Additionally, reviewing system performance data can help determine if the spike is due to a legitimate increase in demand or an underlying issue like a bug or a misconfiguration. Based on findings, actions may include scaling resources, optimizing queries, or rolling back changes if necessary. 25. How would you design an infrastructure solution that needs to comply with specific data privacy regulations? 
Designing an infrastructure solution that complies with specific data privacy regulations involves several key steps. First, conduct a thorough assessment of relevant regulations, such as GDPR or HIPAA, to understand the requirements. Next, implement data encryption both in transit and at rest to protect sensitive information. Utilize access controls to limit who can view or manipulate data, ensuring that only authorized personnel have access. Regular audits and monitoring should be established to detect any potential violations. Finally, ensure that data storage solutions are located in compliant jurisdictions and that contracts with third-party service providers stipulate adherence to privacy standards. In preparing for your infrastructure engineer interview, familiarizing yourself with these 25 essential questions can significantly enhance your confidence and performance. By understanding the technical concepts and demonstrating your problem-solving skills, you'll be well-equipped to impress your interviewers. Remember, practice makes perfect, so take the time to rehearse your answers. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and share it with others who may benefit. Don't forget to subscribe for more insightful content to help you on your career journey. Good luck with your interviews!